Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Interesting video today, guys. We're gonna react to why the Trinity Doctrine doesn't make sense. Five reasons by the channel Christian Monotheism. Coming from an Orthodox Christian perspective, I of course have a lot of sympathy for the Christian monotheistic perspective because the Trinity was the main reason why I left Orthodox Christianity in the first place. I believe it's of great value to open up dialogue between Christians and Muslims and talk about why the Trinity is false. With no further ado guys, let's have a look. These five questions will help you see why a growing number of people are beginning to doubt that the traditional teaching about God found in most churches is correct. Number one, Jesus was a Jew, right? Well, Judaism at the time of Jesus and to this day confessed belief in only one individual who is God, the one called Yahweh, Yahweh. or Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. If Jesus was a Jew, then he too must have held this belief, right? Well, we don't have to guess, because Mark 12, 28 through 34, actually records a conversation in which Jesus explicitly agreed with a non-Trinitarian Jewish scribe on his Jewish definition of God. So if Jesus believed in the Trinity, then he should have disagreed with this Jew, right? But in fact, Jesus not only agreed with him about who God was, but even complimented him, saying, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Doesn't this mean that first-generation Christians like Jesus held this same view of God? They're talking about the Shema here, O here Israel, your God is one. Is the Jews? A second question that has caused some trouble is that we cannot find a single place in Scripture where the Trinity is explained. Where is Zero. the verse, chapter, or book that simply states the doctrine? I mean, if this belief is so important, then shouldn't it be explained all over the place like other doctrines are, such as Jesus' death for our sins? Or his resurrection from the dead. Yeah, moreover, if Jesus Christ comes now with a new message, as Christians believe that God is three in one, don't you think then he would have taught exactly that? Because this would be the main difference between Judaism and the modern day Christianity. If Jesus held the belief that God is three in one, he's a trinity, he would be preaching exactly that all the time. This would be the main topic of concern during the time of Jesus. However, you cannot find one message of this. Now, we do know that the Bible can be used to support the trinity, but it can also be used to support slavery, anti-Semitism, and all sorts of things. There has been no shortage of wacky groups that claim the Bible okay, supports their pet. Okay, that's a pretty bad argument because you can actually find phrases about slavery, but you cannot find a phrase about the Trinity. Theories. Right, sure, one could go through good. the arduous chore of cobbling together a verse here and a verse there to erect an impressive facade, which rather than elucidating scripture, actually obscures it. Honestly, the Trinity must be read into scripture, not out from it. In fact, I don't think anyone can arrive yes, at the absolutely. Trinity from only reading the Bible. It has to be taught alongside of Scripture, and even then, most people... Yes, exactly, and this is why we talk about the fitra in Islam, the natural predisposition of mankind. What that means is, naturally, you believe in one God alone. This is your true nature. However, then you're being taught different doctrines. If you're being born in India, for example, you start worshipping the elephant man. People don't even understand it. Not that we blame them. A third question we are constantly asking relates to controversy. In the New Testament, a number of historical controversies are described from the speaking in tongues controversy in Corinth to the sure. Jerusalem Council, which decided whether or not new Gentile converts needed to keep the law. However, one controversy is strikingly absent from the New Testament documents, a controversy over a new definition of God. I mean, think about it. Here I am challenging your understanding of who God is. Yeah, this controversy has been wiped from the face of the earth at the Council of Nicaea. This is where they persecuted Arius. This is where they went after the doctrine of Arius and they called him a heretic. Arius was a non-Trinitarian. And so therefore, by majority vote, they decide the Trinity is the rule and everybody else is a heretic. Everybody else should be persecuted. This is why they didn't have that discussion for a thousand years. And you're probably feeling a bit uncomfortable, right? No, well, no, what no. if as a missionary, I came to your church and started preaching that God is only the Father and not the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? 
Wouldn't that cause controversy? Of I won't invite you to Islam. People who believe one thing about God don't just change the moment they hear a new idea. We know that. So what about in the first century? You've got all these Jewish communities throughout the Mediterranean world who are strictly monotheistic. And these Christians come to town preaching a message about the Trinity. Exactly. Wouldn't that cause problems? Of course it would. But where is the evidence of this? In the entire New Testament, we find no controversy over the Trinity. To such a degree... No, it did not happen with the immediate followers of Christ. They still participated, not even in the churches, but rather in the Jewish temples. They were Jews. They were Messianic Jews, if you will. This would be the closest thing to them. They were not modern-day Christians. Modern-day Christianity has been established by Paul through the Roman Empire. That it is but never says, even spelled out clearly. Isn't the simplest explanation for this doctrine that it just wasn't around yet? Our yeah, fourth question... Duh focuses on what language the Bible uses to talk about God. Pronouns can either be singular or plural. Sure. If we read a singular pronoun like I or she, we know that a single person is in mind. But when we read a plural pronoun like we or they, we know that a group of persons are being referenced. So what about God? Not necessarily. It can be a royal pronoun as it is in the Quran. Muslims believe in Tawheed. They believe in total unity of God. There is only one God worthy of worship, nothing else. No duality, no trinity, no octagon, nothing. It's just one God. And even in the Quran, Allah addresses himself with we. That's simply a royal form, nothing more, nothing less. Even if God is comprised of multiple persons, then of course we should find plural pronouns when God is spoken of. But if God is a singular individual, then we should find singular pronouns instead. Think back to text you've read about God. Which kind of pronouns are used? Let's see. One of the most quoted verses in the Bible is in Jeremiah 29 11, which begins with, for I know the plans that I have for you. If God were a trinity, it should read, for we know the plans that we have for you, right? You have I and you have we. Both the Old it's not and a good New point Testaments, either. tens of thousands of... I'm not going to go through the work now, but you can do it yourself. You can Google it and you will find passages where God addressed himself in the we form, in the Old Testament as well. Times when God speaks or when people speak about God, they use singular pronouns instead of plural ones. What's the deal with that? Isn't this grammatical phenomenon evidence that God is one individual rather than three? I agree that he is one. That's a bad other example. Questions that we could ask about the Trinity, but we have time for only one more right now. This one is about Jesus's knowledge. If Jesus is fully God, then he must have full knowledge, right? But what about the time? That is our argument. Said, of that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. Exactly right. And now, even if you would believe that there is a Trinity, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say, yes, God is a Trinity and he consists of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Now, however, you cannot say that they're all co-equal. It does not work because if they are co-equal, they must have co-equal knowledge, co-equal rights, co-equal vision, co-equal perception. Everything has to be identical, of course, but it is not because the Father knows more than the Son here. So therefore, they're not co-equal. It is so simple. Man. Was Jesus lying? I mean, if Jesus is God, then of course he knew when he planned to return, right? But here right. we are again. We have the scripture threatening our belief by clearly and explicitly teaching that Jesus did not know something. Yeah, the orthodox position on this is that Jesus momentarily gives up his God consciousness and sticks to his humanness. But then, yet again, why would he? If he's fully God and fully human, why would he swap and switch between characters like in GTA 5? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If the claim is that he is fully God, fully man, then he is always fully God, fully man. Are we so going to believe Jesus' own words, or should we cling to our tradition regardless of what the scriptures say? Now, we know that there are creative solutions to all of these questions, but they usually complicate the matter rather than explain it. Furthermore, any such attempts have to assume a very developed view of the Trinity and the dual natures of Christ in order to even get started. 
Usually before long, we are told that the Trinity is a mystery, that we have to just exactly. accept it by faith. Yep. We are cautioned that human language and even our own minds are not capable of explaining or grasping God. Though there is some truth. Yes, and that would be all right, because the Church Fathers claim is some things you cannot rationalize, some things you cannot intellectualize. I fully agree with this, and therefore they say we have to accept revelation from God. Yet again, I would fully agree with that. However, <laughs> the missing link here is we have no revelation of God concerning the Trinity. We have the Bible and then you can interpret what is revelation and what not. But in no text ever did it say the Trinity is a revelation of God. God speaks and tells you, worship the Trinity, worship me as a Trinity. There was no such revelation. And therefore then to discard the Trinity as a mystery is a fallacy. Truth in this type of sentiment we still consider such appeals to incomprehensibility as cheating. I mean, let's just reverse our positions for a moment. You be the Unitarian and I'll be the Trinitarian. You try to convince me that my beliefs are unbiblical, anachronistic, analogical. You make some solid arguments and rather than listening and really considering what you are saying, I say, well, I hear what you're saying, but really you just need to accept that this is a mystery that you cannot understand. Yep. You just have to believe it. That's the problem. If I pulled that on you, wouldn't you feel like that was dirty? Yet this is what happens over and over again when we have a conversation with fellow Christians about this subject. I suppose it all comes down to one question. Would you still want to believe it even if it was wrong? That is a valid question because after everything that you presented here, the true question becomes why wouldn't you accept Islam? Then you should probably your not monotheism. waste your time on why this not? website or even watch the rest of this video. In fact, just one minute left. If that is where you're at, you may want to do some serious introspective thinking because this mentality of stubbornly holding to a belief regardless of the evidence is not only fear-based, it is precisely the sort of thinking that surfaces in dangerous cults. But if you are someone who's not afraid to ask yeah, the big questions, yet again, I have to ask the big questions here. Why would you accept the Bible as an authority in the first place? If you have no trust in the church fathers that declared that there is a trinity, why would you then believe in the Bible, even though we do have evidence that the Bible has been corrupted? This is not the case with the Quran. If you are someone who is willing to listen to both sides of the argument, if you are someone who truly believes that God has given you his spirit to lead you into all truth, then stick around. We've got some good stuff for you to think about. Mr. Pony. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. I find it quite fascinating, to be honest, that this man went out of his way and started a YouTube channel called Christian Monotheism. He asked the big questions. He is debating if the Trinity is right or not. Kudos to him. I really appreciate it. However, if you already start debunking Christianity in that aspect and you come to the conclusion that, hey, Jesus did not preach a Trinity, maybe we should worship one God alone, and the church is a corrupt institution, then you would have to come to the conclusion that therefore the Bible has been corrupted as well. And this is not only mind games here, you find a lot of evidence on that subject too. How many Gospels have been removed from the Bible? How many texts have been rewritten, so on and so forth. However, the Quran comes from one source, comes through Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, and has never changed in time. Moreover, it presents the message that you hold so dearly here in absolute clarity. It clarifies that the Christians went wrong. They started worshipping Jesus Christ. They should return to pure monotheism, Tawhid. They should return to worshipping God alone. This is the true religion. Alright guys, with this said for today's video, if you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.